Perhaps Nepal should look at what's happening in Sri Lanka. Their president also covered up for Beijing and look where it got him. Gotabaya Rajapaksa is now public enemy number one in Sri Lanka. In the month of May, he appointed a new prime minister, Ranil Vikramasinghe, and since then, he's lying low. Very few public appearances, very few statements. He's hoping time will heal everything. So he let Vikramasinghe become the face of the government. But today, Gotabaya ventured out again. He visited the Sri Lankan parliament. And the president was probably hoping for a fairy tale return. He came all suited up, ready to address his lawmakers. Take a look at what happened next. <laughs> Our fortunes change. This man was once the most powerful person in Sri Lanka. Lawmakers would not dare oppose him. But today he's being booed out of parliament. They did not even let him speak. I guess time does not heal everything, especially not when you have betrayed your own country. So the message to Gotabaya is clear. You can appoint your prime ministers. You can try lying low. But the public will not forgive your mistakes. There is no fairy tale comeback for the Rajapaksas in Sri Lanka. With that done, the parliament moved on to actual business. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe took the floor. He spoke at length about the current crisis, the shortages, the inflation, the recovery, all of it. And through all of it, one thing stood out, his brutal honesty. Vikramasinghe did not hide the real situation. He revealed the true shape of Sri Lanka's economy. And this is very important. Let me list out what he said. Number one, Sri Lanka is effectively bankrupt. The Prime Minister said this. This economic pain will last throughout 2023, so at least a year and a half more. Number two, the current growth rate is between minus five and minus four. Reversing that will take time. By the end of 2023, Vikramasinghe is hoping for minus one growth. Number three, Sri Lanka's total debt is 21.6 trillion rupees. That's around 60 billion US dollars. Number four, inflation will top 60% by the end of this year. The hope is to bring it down to 6% by 2025. And number five, if everything goes to plan, and that's a big if, if everything goes to plan, then Sri Lanka's economy will return to the 2019 levels by 2025. That's two and a half years from now. That's how long the pain could last. Vikramasinghe's plan requires two things. A, patience, and B, international support. His government has concluded the first round of talks with the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. The next step is debt restructuring and sustainability. Basically, how does Sri Lanka plan to manage their loans? That report will be submitted next month. And only after that, the IMF will decide. Their board will discuss the report, they will consider Sri Lanka's request, and if they're satisfied, then they will approve a bailout. So it's a long process. Now, Sri Lanka has done this before. They've secured 17 loans from the International Monetary Fund, but this one is different. As Vikramasinghe himself fed, said, this time Sri Lanka is a bankrupt country. Listen in. Our country has held talks with the IMF on many occasions before. But this time the situation is different from all those previous occasions. In the past, we have held discussions as a developing country. But now the situation is different. We are now participating in the negotiations as a bankrupt country. Therefore, we have to face a more difficult and complicated situation than previous negotiations. Clearly, this process will take time. Unfortunately, Sri Lanka does not have that luxury every day. They're running out of supplies. Schools and government offices have been shut. Fuel sales are limited to essential services. Yet the queues are not getting shorter. On Monday, a man died in his car waiting for fuel. Imagine that. He died in his car waiting for fuel. This was the 13th such incident reported in Sri Lanka. 13 people dying in queues. So Sri Lanka's most pressing requirement is supplies, food, fuel, medicines. And to secure them, Vikramasinghe is planning a donor conference. He's betting mainly on three countries, India, China and Japan. And these countries are expected to provide bridge financing, sort of like temporary relief. They could keep Sri Lanka running until the IMF money comes. 
but is there scope to do more? Could one country bail out Sri Lanka single-handedly? An economist in Singapore believes it is possible. He says India could bail Sri Lanka out. It's an interesting proposal. India must provide Sri Lanka with 20 to 25 billion dollars. Not in one go, but in phases. This money will be used to kickstart the Sri Lankan economy. Will India be open to doing this is the big question. Let's consider the pros and cons. This bailout could give India a strategic advantage over China. We're talking about $20 billion. That sort of money comes with a lot of clout. Unfortunately, that's also the downside. We're talking about $20 billion. Will Indian taxpayers agree to foot this bill, especially with the recession looming? Chances are they won't. So right now, the IMF remains Sri Lanka's best bet. India's job is to plug the shortages in the meantime to keep its neighbour running through this tough phase. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.